Hello gorgeous peeps, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with the new Huawei Mate 20 Pro and also the P20 Pro, two of the best Android smartphones launched so far in 2018. I'm going to do a quick side by side with them so you can see what the difference is and which one might be best for you. And don't forget for more on the latest greatest mobile tech including the Huawei Mate 20 Pro to ding that notifications bell and hit that subscribe button. Cheers! First up there is a clear size difference between these two handsets. The Huawei Mate 20 Pro is an absolute beast at 6.39 inches although still not the biggest smartphone that we've seen in 2018. Meanwhile the P20 Pro is 6.1 inches which is almost dinky by standards. As you see there the bezels on the Mate 20 Pro are definitely slimmer than here on the P20 Pro especially down below. On the P20 Pro you've actually got fingerprint sensor built in there beneath the display whereas here on the Mate 20 Pro it's completely clean. That said when it comes to the notch action up top the Mate 20 Pro is an absolute beast just like the iPhone XS. The reason for that is the advanced 3D modeling. Considering the Mate 20 Pro screen is so much bigger, it is actually more or less the same dimensions as the P20 Pro, it's quite impressive. Both are quite comfortable to clutch as well thanks to the nice curvaceous edges. As you can see there, the screen actually does slightly bend around the edge of the, uh, d the device here on the Mate 20 Pro, whereas in the case of the P20 Pro you don't get that same funky effect. Flip them around though and the uh, design is pretty similar. You see there, they both sport a glossy glass surfacing, so a nice and shiny it does scuff up a little bit unfortunately especially when it catches the light just so uh, but you do get a nice transparent cover with both phones as well bundled in the box you can always slap that on if you want to try and prevent that they both come in a number of different hues as well in this case it's the uh, the sort of lovely gradient finish on both blowers we definitely recommend it the finish is absolutely gorgeous very original very fresh absolutely love it you get full dust and water resistance on both of these blowers as well. It's IP67 here on the P20 Pro and on the Mate 20 Pro it gets a slight boost to IP68. So definitely either will do the job if you want to just like take them into the swimming pool or uh, take them for a bit of a swim, something like that, whatever your bag is. Both phones use a bit of Type C action for charging and data transfer, although sadly you do not get a 3.5mm headphone jack. You'll have to use a bit of a dongle. And if you're interested you do get a bit of an IR blaster up top. Now as touched on before you do of course have a fingerprint sensor housed beneath Beneath the display here on the P20 Pro, just quick tap of that and you're straight into your desktops, no worries. But here on the Mate 20 Pro, it's a bit more snazzy. It's actually built into the display itself. So just a firm tap there and as you can see again, straight into your desktops. And with the security, you do actually have facial recognition built into both phones as well. You can just raise to wake and as you can see, straight again into your desktops, boom, no hanging around. Of course, the facial recognition is a bit more advanced here on the Mate 20 Pro because you've got that full 3D modeling. But with both these phones, I've found that I can happily unlock them even when it's pitch black, no problems at all. Even if I'm walking, moving around the place, they'll recognize my face and get me straight into the desktops. Now, what about that display tech? Well, it's an OLED panel on both of these handsets. You get crisper images here on the Mate 20 Pro as it is a Quad HD Plus display. So that's 3120 by 1440. Here on the P20 Pro, it is a Full HD Plus, so it's 2244 by 1080. That said, stick two images side by side and you will kind of struggle to notice the difference. Occasionally you can pick out slightly finer details here on the Mate 20 Pro, but in both cases, absolutely stunning. And as you can see, they're really punchy, vibrant visuals. You can also expect nice sharp contrast and everything as well. And if you dive into those display settings, you can fully customize the output in both of these handsets as well. So if you dive into the color and eye comfort mode, as you can see, you've got the natural tone mode, which can automatically change the color temperature depending on the ambient environment. You can also switch between the vivid mode and the normal mode and play around with the color temperature manually. And of course, you've got the usual eye comfort mode and everything for night time too. Now both the P20 Pro and the Mate 20 Pro are running Android. In the case of the P20 Pro it's still running Android Oreo although that should get an update to Android Pie which is running on the Mate 20 Pro imminently. And of course you get Huawei's own Emotion UI overlay slathered over the top. Again here on the Mate 20 Pro it's the latest version, version 9, whereas you're still on version 8.1 here on the P20 Pro but Again, as I said before, it should get a full update soon. Motion UI adds in all kinds of bonus features. So for instance, you've got that facial recognition. You've also got some handy one-handed modes as well in both cases, which is good because these are both quite beastly blowers. That just shrinks down the screen, makes it much easier to manage your apps and everything. Definitely a bonus. You can also use full gesture controls to replace the navigation dock down below as well. That's a lot more advanced here on the latest version of Motion UI. However, you've got more of an Android Pie style uh, design. So for 
first is you can go back with a quick swipe uh, at the side of the screen here. You can jump back to your home screen with a swipe up and you can also access all of your recent apps by swiping up and holding. It's definitely a very nice way of doing things. Uh, it's very intuitive and definitely prefer it to the, uh, the slightly rubbish on-screen navigation effort uh, that you have here on the older Motion UI 8. You get a whole bunch of other bonus features as well, uh, such as the digital balance. I've actually done an in-depth look at a Motion UI 9, so go check that out if you want to know more. And as I say, all that shenanigans should be coming to the P20 Pro imminently anyway. However, when it comes to the performance, the Mate 20 Pro will remain the superior. It's rocking the new Huawei Kirin 980 chipset backed by six gigs of RAM compared with the older Kirin 970 chipset here on the P20 Pro, again backed by six gigs of RAM. If we dive on into Geekbench, however, you'll see a clear difference between the two. As you can see there, both the single core and the multi-core score, a massive update here on the Mate 20 Pro. That said, the Kirin 970 still handles life uh, pretty damn well. As you can see, you can load up apps basically straight away. As soon as you tap them, boom, they're straight on the screen. We found that with everyday play, we definitely do not struggle here on the P20 Pro. It's a nice, smooth experience. You can play the latest games such as PUBG Mobile with a nice, smooth frame rate, get beaten up by naked ladies, always fun. Here on the Mate 20 Pro, for some reason, it doesn't support HD or HDR uh, graphics just yet, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure that'll be coming imminently. The Kirin 980 can definitely handle it, as you can imagine. But of course, here on the P20 Pro, you do get already support for the full graphics. You can boost it all the way up. Uh, you can get a nice smooth frame rate no matter what you're doing. And of course, both of these phones support GPU Turbo. That just gives you a nice consistent frame rate uh, while you are gaming. Uh, so again, no worries whatsoever. As for the battery life, we were very impressed by the P20 Pro. It lasts you generally between a day and a half and a day, even with some pretty intensive use, thanks to that mighty 4,000 milliamp cell. And you do get a bit of Huawei's supercharge on there as well to power it back up nice and quick. However, here on the Mate 20 Pro, it is a step up from that. Even as a 4,200 milliamp cell, it's so slightly bigger but now you get even better supercharge it's 40 watt capability so that means even faster charge you can get close to a full charge in just an hour which is impressive stuff and you also now have full support for wireless charging as well using the Qi standard and you can even do wireless reverse charging which turns the Mate 20 Pro into a wireless charger, which is a bit bonkers, but it actually works. As for the storage, you get 128 gigs as standard in there, which is plenty of room for all of your apps, media, all the rest of it. And the Mate 20 Pro has support for nano memory cards as well, whereas you don't get any kind of expandable storage here on the P20 Pro. And now the really interesting bit, the camera tech. Now both of these blows sport a Leica branded uh, smartphone camera. And of course there's a tri-lens setup on both these handsets as well, but it is different hardware and you do get some different software smart too. So here on the P20 Pro, it's a 40 megapixel RGB lens with an f1.8 as that primary lens. And you get exactly the same thing here on the Mate 20 Pro. However, when it comes to secondary lenses on the P20 Pro, you get a 20 megapixel f1.6 monochrome lens. Whereas the Mate 20 Pro changes that up, you get a 20 megapixel ultra wide lens instead, and that's an f2.2. I'll demonstrate that in a bit, but it basically adds a bit more flexibility, allows you to get a nice wide angle shot of whatever you're snapping. And both phones also offer an 8 megapixel third lens as a telephoto snapper to help it get you nice up and close to your subject. It's an f2.4 and it's got built in optical image stabilization to help give you a nice crisp shot. So we dive on into the camera app, you'll see it has the same basic setup on both of these blowers. You start off in your full photo mode, you do of course have access to the master AI, which just is a bit of scene recognition, helps to boost the look of your photos. You can manually tweak the color output as well, vivid colors, standard colors, etc. You got the likes of the moving pictures mode as well, which just shoots a brief snippet of video with every photo you take. And of course, a bit of high vision Google Lens style action as well. You can zoom in with a quick tap here. You've got your three times optical zoom and then a five times hybrid zoom as well. And here on the Mate 20 Pro, you also have that ultra wide angle lens, which you can jump to in a jiffy. And as you can see there, if you're shooting a nice wide uh, scene, a uh, cityscape or a landscape, something like that, that could come in very handy indeed. Of course, you've got the full portrait smarts as you would expect. You actually get some bonus uh, functionality here on the Mate 20 Pro as well. You've got the uh, funky uh, various lighting effects and you've also got the ability to change the background style as well. Whereas here on the P20 Pro, you just get a selection of lighting modes. Of course, you've got the same great night mode on both of these handsets that just helps you to get a really nice crisp shot, even in low light conditions with a long exposure. Works really, really well indeed, impressive stuff. And if you know what you're doing, you've got full manual controls on both the P20 Pro and the Mate 20 Pro as well. So you can tweak the likes of the ISO levels, the white balance, and you get a whole host of other camera features too. Including, as you can see, a nice bit of time-lapse, slow motion, all that kind of shenanigans. And if you jump on into the video settings, you can shoot up to 4K resolution video 
with both of these handsets as well. Stay tuned for a full camera comparison that will be coming very very shortly and also if we swap around to the front facing cameras it's a 24 megapixel snapper on both of these blowers again with an f2.0 aperture i believe it is on both handsets and of course you've got the usual portrait smarts and everything on both of these handsets so no problem there as you can see you've also got hdr functionality here on the mate 20 pro so hopefully be better for those uh, more dynamic scenes and once again you can pick the style of the uh, the background here on the mate 20 pro and with that 3d model and tech you can actually scan in items as well bring them to life in 3d uh, which is something that we're going to be testing out soon so stay tuned for all you need to know about that and that in a nutshell is Huawei's P20 Pro and Mate 20 Pro compared side by side. As you can see, the P20 Pro is still a great handset, but the Mate 20 Pro does offer some significant updates, including the ability to wirelessly charge or reverse wirelessly charge. You've also got that in-screen fingerprint sensor as well, which is snazzy stuff. And the camera tech has been updated too. And of course, with that Kirin 980 chipset, it is much more up to date. It should go the distance, no problem. So let us know what you think in the comments down below. It'd definitely be great to hear what you think. If you're going to stick with the P20 Pro, if you're more tempted by the Mate 20 Pro, definitely let us know. And don't forget for more on the Mate 20 Pro and the latest greatest mobile tech to ding that notifications bell, hit that subscribe button, and as always, love you!